Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm here to review Die Alone, and this is a new horror thriller coming to you from writer-director Lowell Dean, who has done films like Wolf Cop, and here we have the story of a young man, Ethan, played by Douglas Smith, who's desperately trying to find his girlfriend, Emma, during this apocalyptic play, uh, time and space when this plant-based virus has really caused the fall of humanity. And he comes upon May, played by Carrie Ann Moss, and winds up trying to navigate his amnesia that he's experiencing and figuring out where Emma is. And this film feels very... It, it's interesting because it feels very derivative of The Last of Us. Like, this is the kind of film that feels like this could have easily been like a spin-off episode of The Last of Us, like showing this particular experience, like this offshoot of an isolated story in that world. So those kinds of elements don't feel the freshest because it all feels just, hey, been there, done that. There's not a whole lot of that leveraging of like these plant zombie things but it's there. There's a lot of mystery to this story and what's really going on. And it's compelling. And there's also some emotional connection here. Now I'll have to say, I, don't, I didn't find Smith's performance or the character of Ethan the most compelling a character to really anchor this film. And he does have that challenge of like, he's always not knowing anything because he has amnesia. But it's Carrie Ann Moss who really anchors this film down in such a great way. How this story plays out, it's interesting because Carrie Ann Moss has been in a role like this before, and I'm not going to say what film because we'd be giving some stuff away, but I feel like this film feels even a little bit more derivative, and even in that casting element of this is a kind of character that Moss has played before, but there's just so much emotional resonance here with her performance, and she really brings a presence here. You do have Frank Grillo in this film, too, for a later on, like, third act part of this film, and the character that he plays is very convincing for how Grillo plays it. He's this tough guy kind of character, I do find this film a little bit too messy in terms of how it structures its narrative. I understand that this is like, hey, he has amnesia, so we're also going to be kind of like trying to piece things together. But the choices that Dean makes in terms of when to specifically frame and utilize flashbacks and stuff feels a little clunky because the first hour of five minutes of this film feels like, oh wait, we have reached our climax and we're done, and then we're whisked into this prolonged flashback to be like, but this is what really happened, and it's like one of those kinds of things that feels, it feels clunky in the execution in this film, but how, like the mystery that's behind all of this is shocking, it's emotionally impactful, and I, between, I really think that Moss's performance is able to really pull it together. And thematically, how this film deals with love and loss and grief and the great lengths that will go to avoid feeling that pain is something impressive. And I was really impressed by some of the, like the special effects, the makeup and stuff like that that Dean incorporates into this some of the emotional beats really hit. This has a lot of potential and has some elements that really work. Sure, it's not perfect and it's a little clunky in its execution, but and it's a bit derivative of a very significant IP at the moment, but it really feels like this is something that can resonate and hit and it is thoroughly engaging and interesting for just about a little over 90 minutes. But those are my thoughts on Die Alone. Let me know what you think and let's talk some movies. But thank you as always for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.